Hey everybody, welcome to Dreamframer Photography. Today I'm going to show you how to resize and crop images in Photoshop. Before we start, just a quick announcement. Some of you might know that I have a new YouTube channel now where I upload my original music, good for relaxation, meditation, sleep and focus, and some nature sounds. Well, more experienced people advised me to move all those videos to this channel and just create a new playlist. So I will keep uploading my Photoshop and stock photography videos every Sunday as usual and those videos will have that recognizable thumbnail that you got used to. My music and nature sounds videos will have different kind of a thumbnail and I will be uploading them during the week. Now let's move to the tutorial about resizing and cropping images in Photoshop. If you are new to Photoshop or if you are trying to sell images online, you will benefit a lot from this channel, so subscribe if you still haven't. As many other things in Photoshop, we can crop or resize the image in a couple of different ways, but most of the times we're going to use Crop Tool. When I click on the Crop Tool, Photoshop will give me options for it here on the top, just like for any other tool. And the first box is the ratio. Let's try to set our own ratio to see how it works. This is the box for the width. I'm gonna set it to 2. And the box for the height, I'm gonna set to 1. You can see that now we have this crop area and if I drag any of these corners, I can't change the ratio. The width is always double the length of the height. When you activate crop tool, you will notice that the crop area is divided by two vertical and two horizontal lines. And this has to do with photo composition. To learn about photo composition, click on the card that showed up on the video now, or go to the description of this video because over there I also posted the link to my tutorial about photo composition. Let's clear this now. In the same box for the ratio, you have some default ratios. These are for printing, for example. If you want to print your images, you usually want to set the resolution to 300 pixels per inch. That's what this number means. If you want, you can also set your own ratio and resolution here. So let's say we want our image to be 4 inches by 5 inches and the resolution to be 300 pixels per inch. If I now try to drag these corners, the crop area will change, but the final image will always be 4 inches by 5 inches with resolution 300 pixels per inch. To confirm the crop, I just have to click here. So the image is automatically cropped and resized. Let's undo that now. First thing that you can notice on this image is that the horizon is not horizontal and of course we have these empty areas around our panorama. Crop tool can fix even that. So let me first clear these dimensions and numbers here. And then I'm going to click on this ruler icon, which is a straighten tool. When I click on it, I can drag the line where the horizon actually is. When I lift the mouse, the image will be rotated and slightly cropped. Now we can change the crop but horizon will still stay horizontal. It's your decision if you want to keep these empty areas around our panorama and fill them in later, or you just want to completely cut them off, like this. You can also click on the image inside the cropped area and move it around to adjust the, the position. When you're happy with the crop, you will have two options to actually crop the image. And the default is to delete cropped pixels, which means that when you click this check mark to confirm the crop, all other areas around 
the crop area will be deleted. If you confirm your crop now, you will actually cut all those areas around the crop area and Photoshop will basically forget about them. If you want to go back to that step, you will have to go to Ctrl Z or Undo. If you do this, you'll notice that Photoshop also reverts the horizon to the previous position. So now we have to correct it again. Let's adjust the crop area a little bit. Something like this. And let's say we don't want to go through that hassle again. So we want to keep these pixels around just in case we want to change the crop. For that, I just have to uncheck this box. And if I crop the image now, the image will be cropped, but Photoshop will remember the pixels around. So now if I want to crop the image again, I just have to do this and you see that Photoshop kept all the areas around our panorama. Let's do it again. I'm going to click to confirm the crop. Now I just have to click on the crop tool again and grab one of these corners and we still see the whole image. So that was crop tool. Another way to crop the image is to use rectangular marquee tool. If I click on it, I can select any portion of the image and I can go to the image and select crop. Now you have to pay attention that the whole image is still selected. If you are doing something, you have to know that the whole image is selected. To deselect it, you can click Ctrl D or you can go to select and then deselect. Right now it's grayed out because I already did it using the keyboard shortcut. Let me undo that. And deselect this portion again. I can actually change the selection if I want to. Let's say we select something like this and then I can right click inside the selection and choose transform selection. Now I can drag these points, adjust the selection, confirm, and then go to image and crop. Let's undo that again and deselect Ctrl D or Command D on Mac. Now let me show you how to straighten the horizon without the crop tool. When you click on these three dots, you have a bunch of tools. One of the tools is the ruler. If you click on the ruler, you can do the same thing as with the crop tool. Click and drag and let go. Then you have to go to image, image rotation and click arbitrary. Just confirm. And the horizon is now corrected. Now you can use rectangular marquee tool. Make your selection. Go to image and crop. That was about cropping. Now let's talk about resizing. First I need to undo this. And to deselect. So let's say we want this portion of the image and let's crop that. Now if you go to the image in the main menu and click image size, this box will open. Here you have the width and the height and the units. Right now the units are pixels and most of the times we're going to be using pixels. You can use inches, centimeters, millimeters, but most of the times we're going to be using pixels. So our image is 5,600 
32 pixels wide and 2,382 pixels tall. And these two dimensions are connected. So if I change the height to let's say 2,000, you'll see that the width is changing as well. That's not going to happen if I unlink width and height by clicking here. So now if I change the height to 1000, the width is the same as before and the image is basically stretched. So let's say we want to shrink this image so the height is 2000 pixels. You can click here in this little window and drag and see how the image looks like now. This is the preview of the resized image and the zoom is 100%. Photoshop can resize the image using few different algorithms and those algorithms are placed here. You have automatic mode, you have preserve details mode which is good for enlargement, bicubic smoother also for enlargement, bicubic sharper for reduction and bicubic smooth gradients and so on. Most of the times we're gonna use bicubic or smooth gradients and sometimes bicubic sharper for reduction but if you want to enlarge your images you have to know that you will be um, losing some details so you have to be careful when doing that usually we don't want to enlarge images more than 10 percent enlarging images also can produce some noise and jpeg artifacts so if we want to do that let's say we want to click on the first option and enlarge the height to 4000 you'll see that we lost some details on the image and here we can kind of reduce the noise if there is any by moving this slider to the right but that way we're losing more details so uh, be careful with this slider pay attention at the texture here on this hill right now we don't have any noise reduction if I push it to the right we're losing some details over here right now, if we want to reduce the size of the image to 2000 pixels, the image will look sharper anyway. But if the image is not really in focus, you probably want to use this option here, Bicubic Sharper. When you click on that, Photoshop will create uh, the smaller version of the image that is a little bit sharper than the original one. Let's try to see the difference between this algorithm, Bicubic Sharper, and this one, Bicubic Smooth Gradients. When I click on this one, you probably can notice that we kind of lost some details on these trees, which is not really true. They're not lost, they're just a little bit smoother. If I choose this algorithm, pay attention to the trees. I don't know if you can notice this on YouTube, but I can see it here on my screen clearly. And maybe if we go here and find some mountain peak, for example this one, maybe here we can see the difference better. Let's choose smooth gradients. I can see a little bit of a difference and I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but I can. And sometimes if you are selling photos online, your image can be rejected for over sharpening if you use this algorithm. So pay attention to that. When you use this algorithm to reduce the size of the image, Always check the image at 100% zoom. 
Now this image is not the best example for what I'm trying to show you, but on some other images you can clearly see the difference between bicubic sharper and bicubic smooth gradients. Plus, there is a compression while I'm recording my screen, there is a compression when I'm producing the video, and there is a compression that YouTube applies while processing the video. Just remember this, if your image is slightly blurred, bicubic sharper algorithm could help. However, sometimes it can create over sharpened image. So my advice would be try to use bicubic smooth gradients whenever you can. When you're happy with the chosen algorithm, just click OK and the image will be resized. Image size menu has some default options as well. And they are here. You can fit the image to A4 paper or letter or 4 by 6 inches, 300 um, dots per inch. Photoshop will adjust the size of the image accordingly. Let me undo that and show you one more thing. So far, we were resizing the whole image. So if we had more than one layer, all these layers would be resized by this method. However, if you want to resize just one layer, so let's copy this layer to the new one. And let's say we want to resize this layer. We have to select that layer and go to Edit, Transform, Scale. Now you can resize just that layer. And I just clicked on the corner of it and I'm dragging with the mouse. Let's say I want the ratio of the layer to stay the same. In that case, I'm gonna click Shift on the keyboard and drag with the mouse. You can see now that the image is not stretched. The ratio stays the same. If you click Alt and start dragging with the mouse, the image will stay in the center and you can change the ratio of it. But if you click Shift and Alt or Option on Mac, at the same time, then the ratio stays the same and the image stays in the center. So that's the way to change the size of only one layer. That was all about cropping and resizing images in Photoshop. If this video helped you, press that like button and if you have any questions, post them in the comment section below. See you soon. Bye.